Hey, how is everybody? So my name is Nydia. I'm your resident ganja clergy woman. Please come up, share the stage. Let's chat about uh, kids and edible safety. Um, a little bit about me. I run UR Wellness. I'm a holistic guide where I teach people how to balance Eastern and Western medicine through endocannabinoid balance. Hey, Lisa, come on up. If you feel up to it, you have the time or space. Um, otherwise, I understand if you stay in the chat, all good. Uh, the other thing I do is my son and I have a t-shirt company called Gut Terpenes, where we talk about simple conversations to start out in public. Um, sometimes people stare, sometimes people laugh. Hey, doesn't matter. At least they see that uh, I'm trying to break the stigma and I'm a mom, right? And then uh, the last thing that I do is Noted. That's my other company <laughs> where we're opening uh, Breaking Stigma with Education and Research. Hey, Debbie, how are you? Hi, Nydia. I came up because I was like, hey, I get to see your face and move while you talk. <laughs> Kisses. Yay. So, yeah. yeah. How are you today? Introduce yourself. Let, I let out the people in the room know what you do. Sure, sure. Um. Well, I'm definitely here to sesh, so let me uh, smoke yeah, a little. Yeah, I need to get a little hot. more rolling papers. Yeah. Um, my name is Debbie Speranza. I actually um, love coming to these uh, tokativity events because I love to spend time with other women, and we all talk about what we do, and it's really just a chance for me to uh, relax. Uh, so at RMCC, we provide uh, online education and in-person education, but as the chief learning officer, I'm like, super stoked about our online training and, and that stuff. Um, so we deliver training online uh, for folks throughout the supply chain or ancillary businesses, uh, specifically for compliance uh, and their technology and all that good stuff. So I was just in the um, Bridges room um, and I am so hungry. <laughs> That's really I don't know. The chitterlings got me. Media, and I wanted I'm to not, tell I'm everyone how hungry I was. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, Lisa, nice to see you. Hey, Amanda. Guys, hey, Miss Kindness. My friends in here. How are you, dear? It's good to see your face. Thanks. You too. Y'all, a lot of us know each other from um, Clubhouse and. Lisa, Debbie, and I, along with a, a few other, several other ladies, get together every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And we actually get to see each other face to face and such together versus over the phone. I don't think I realized this was the same Lisa. Yeah. Oh, yay. Virtual hugs. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, it's like hugs. <laughs> I'm in color. Yeah. But no, come up. Like, um, where do you guys keep your edibles? So I keep my edibles. My son knows what my edibles are because this is a can of mom sesh regarding edibles and child safety, right? Um, it's mm -hmm. funny. Uh, I've been told sometimes there's some um, opinions in terms of like keeping them locked up in safes and stuff like that so kids can't get to them. Um, but like even when my son was a toddler and I had cannabis, I wouldn't keep it locked out, but I also wouldn't keep it on the floor where he could reach it or, you know, um, on top of the table where he could reach it, you know, knowing that kids put stuff in their mouths all the time. So just, you know, yeah, Ms. Kindness said anywhere food is. Yeah, I, I also have a, a specific cabinet above my coffee machine where, and it's see-through, where all of my edibles are. Um, and I'm not much of an edible person because they do put me to sleep unless it's a very carefully curated and crafted amazing dinner. And then that's totally different. Um, but the edibles, yeah, I keep them up there. And then I tell him, like, if it does look like candy, I show it to him. And I'm like, I know this looks like candy, but it has that, like, one molecule in cannabis that can make you a little dizzy. And he's like, oh, yeah, I don't want that. And I'm like, yeah, no, you don't. And so I show him where I put it. So where do you guys, where do you ladies keep it? And um you know, if it's anything special or if it's just casual for you, it's all good. We're open to all. Well, I don't know if there's anyone who has uh, young children. Mine are minor adults, so um, I don't really have uh, quite the same problem anymore. So, uh, Lisa, if you 
if you have something to share, uh, if you have younger children, that's more relevant. Um, by all means, why don't you go ahead and go first? Um, well, I'm not a mom, uh, but I am here because I want to teach people about cannabis and I want to right share on. the knowledge about cannabis. So I support the can of moms and I want to be aware of, you know, what's considered the norms among the can of moms so I can blend yeah. into that environment. So I'm here to learn from the best over here, Miss Nydia. Um, all your experience is amazing. So I'm, I have the benefit of just keeping my, my cannabis and edibles wherever the fuck I want to keep them because it's my house. <laughs> I just keep them away from anyone else who I don't want to know that I have them, basically. I have um, dogs. Hey, Kindness, I what do you keep your edibles? Yeah. Zanny, you've got little ones around. I do. Hey, Jasmine, I, um, I feel so, hi, so, hey, I feel um I feel really privileged in this speak because I I I, I make talking to people about how to have cannabis around their kids. Um, but mine is literally wherever. I mean, if I were if I could move this whole setup in front of me, you would see edibles over here downstairs in the cabinet um, next to other supplements are various tinctures and drops of all kinds, uh, gummies from full spectrum CBD to one-to-ones. And, but my children are nine and 11. They both can read. They both know what cannabinoids are, that whole spectrum. That's why I love what you said, Nydia, about, oh, this has that one cannabinoid in it or that one molecule in it. And he understood that uh, we grow cannabis next to our tomatoes. So it's included in our conversations from like the ground, like this is how food comes out of the ground. And this is one of the flowers. But I do have to tell them like the reality that like you can't have this one because it's going to make you feel this way. Same rules apply. My kids don't just go into the fridge and drink a bunch of juice either. They ask. So it's really it's out. It's it's normal. And it's like, this is mine. And this is yours. So I, I don't know. I know, again, when I talk about this, I think I'm amongst company, but it's very privileged to be like, oh, I just leave it out. Well, it started with conversations a long time ago to be able to just leave it out. So my house is kind of just like yours, Lisa. My son is um, now almost 21 years it's old. a great reflection of how it should be, for sure. And I... I I started making edibles before he was born. So like the late nineties. And that's always been like my thing for me, my friends, we always had amazing 420 events before, like it was like a national thing to do or an international thing to do. So when he was born and growing up, they were always in the house. And we had those discussions before, I think even people knew that to have those discussions. And it was whatever we talk about, we don't take the school or outside of the house, but I want you to know these are mommies and her, you know. So he grew up knowing like, he used to ask, well, are these for everybody or are these just for grownups? But we had those discussions very, very young and he grew up respecting cannabis the same way my parents educated us on alcohol and respecting alcohol. And my stepfather being from Italian background and alcohol being a you know, in little bits being at dinner. And, and not that I gave my son cannabis in little bits, but understanding and having respect for usage of anything gives children when they grow into adults a whole different respect and outlook on usage as a whole. And now that he's 21 and almost about to have, you know, it, the ability to go into dispensaries and hearing him educating his friends throughout the years from what I've told him is like, yay, cannabis. So talking like the anti-drug, you know, is communication or, you know, with anything that it's communicating with their kids, like don't make it a bad guy. You know, the parents that made alcohol or anything out there made your, everybody run to it. But if you respect it and appreciate it, there's better boundaries within the home and outside of the home. Yeah. I, when I was, a uh raising my kids. I, kind of, I, was a, I was a young mother, so I had a, a closer recollection of, of how I was uh, in my youth and wanting to, uh, you know, when I was curious or when I was pushing boundaries, you know, with, with my parents. And so uh, I never hid 
my my cannabis consumption from my children um but i did literally hide my uh my flower um in little bits around my room that i locked so if and when my children were like you know what i know what it's going to do to me and i'm curious i want to check it out um they didn't great bust into my stash and smoke my weed or start going to school and selling it and then i'm in trouble so i did hide it for because they're going to be uh Curious. you know you're 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 you, you know your your folk mo right now may be like cool oh, i don't i don't want to be dizzy with that one molecule but someday you know they very well may be like i'm ready um and again so i think because everyone is having these open conversations with their with their child uh we're not going to do like the things that i did with alcohol when it was like man you can't do any of this man the first thing i did <laughs> when the parents left the house i got drunk on peppermint schnapps like drunk and like i still to this day don't like a mint shake i don't like minty things because of that peppermint schnapps <laughs> you know so children are going to be children they're going to be uh curious and so i'm i'm so um uh stoked to just hear again the fact that we especially if we're, we're in legal states now we can have these conversations with our children in the open we don't have to be afraid as afraid of them going to school and repeating those conversations. Uh, you know, not everyone is in a legal state. And so, um, you know, it's it, I'm certain it's pretty challenging still to have conversations with those children. Um, I'll stop talking. I love how everyone has these like, this is drink and it turned me off. This was the one that did it to me. Mine was Captain Morgan. I don't drink peach schnapps. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, I was thinking, Debbie, about um, this, this idea of like communication is the anti-drug because yes, my son, we already have talked about like his experiences with cannabis and he's had full spectrum and he's had a little bit more than full spectrum and we've experienced that and we've seen him kind of giggle out and talk about how he felt and i'm fairly confident he's going to smoke weed i'm fairly confident he can't wait to smoke weed but we've also talked about smoking and inhalation and hot smoke and so i'm ready for the conversation when he comes to me and says can i have like a my friends want to do this and I'm going to of course say well I'm not their mother but I'm happy to give my 16 year old his first experience in, a, in an environment with someone that knows what they're doing and has so access to the source of the product and so that he can go out yeah. like Jasmine's kids and or adult adults now adult young adults and teach his peers about ethical consumption so yeah. right like because of what we're doing now things will be so much different Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love the stories of the kids of you get like the cannabis moms I'm interviewing and the kids who are like 11 or 12 are literally educating kids who want to give them booth. I mean, <laughs> I they're like, you know, does it smell right? What is the terpene profile? Like who's growing it? This is too, you know, they know. I just, I, I interviewed Kelly um, Bruce today from the cannabis mommy and her 11 year old daughter has this whole, it was hysterical. Like she just, she knows how to talk the talk and I hear it's kind of a joke with me, but it's really happening. Your kids are really doing this. My son, his sophomore year of high school was in one of his class health, his health class. And the teacher was discussing cannabis and was talking about overdosing and all this stuff. And my son got really upset and actually called me on speakerphone during the class because at that time I was um, the GM of a cannabis company and it was like, my mom is very knowledgeable on this. And I know for a fact, this is, and he was like, mom, I don't want to argue with my teacher, but can you please let the class know that what he's trying to tell them is not correct, that they will die of inhalation before they die of overdose. And I was like, um, yes, but can we have this conversation in a private meeting with your teacher before he's educating the class and not on the spot because I'm at work. <laughs> but it's those kind of conversations being a cannon mom and being in the end and like this educating our kids because there's a lot of misinformation that is being given to them in the school systems and from their friends or parents or just different people they run into that they respect as adults. 
So yeah. I love that. Maureen, you said in the comments that you teach by teaching the plants that are in the garden. And that's actually how my son and I established our t-shirt company got terpenes. Cause oh. he, he drew, there's this terpene chart right behind me. And oh. he sat down one day and he's like, Oh, linalool. And what's the plant mommy? And I said, lavender and myrcene. And what's the, what's the one mango. And so we cut a mango and he looked at it and drew it down really proud um, and went to my cousin's house and, and he went to go put it on and he started talking about cannabis and they told him to take it off um, <laughs> and didn't even get him, give him a chance. And when he came home, I was like, wait, but they have sage in the garden. <laughs> I was like, we're going to try this again. So I scheduled another sleepover and I sent the same t-shirt over. And when I went to go pick him up and he didn't have it on, I decided, I was like, let's go out into the garden and check out your sage. You want to give me some, don't you? I want to make a, a, a sage bundle with it. Yeah. And so I went out here, there and as she was cutting it and I was like, you ever heard of humulene? You know, and we just started talking about other terpenes. So go for it. I'd love to hear, you know, how you deal with that and your edibles. And I'm not going to mute because I had technical difficulties and couldn't unmute. So I apologize in advance. That's why I had to leave and come back. So I will just try to stay quiet. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, no, I had um, started growing last year and I really didn't kind of make it a big deal I just started growing alongside of my basil and my tomatoes and then jokingly just kept calling them my Colorado tomatoes. And then, um, you know, once they started looking like something, right, the bud started popping last year. And I'm a total novice, second year grower, longtime user, second year grower. <laughs> and uh, as a joke, my maiden name is Doobie. I'm serious about that. And my... Uh, um, Married name is uh, Savage, so that was always um, always a fun thing to grow up with. Um, but yeah, so they were right alongside it. And so when they started budding, I explained, that, like, here's the fruit, the tomato, and here's the fruit flower of, of a cannabis plant, you know, and right alongside. And I didn't hide them, although in Colorado, I do have locked, you know, when you're growing, um, you have to have them behind locked and they can't be, um, you know, visible. Um, but I have them in these movable smart pots. So I purposely leave them out and then I can hear like kids don't even notice. Like it's not even that big, big of a deal. But once they started budding, I just kind of said, here's just another plant. And then with having all of my herbs in my kitchen anyway, it's right next to my basil. It doesn't even look like you can't even tell. It's, it's just all there. You know, and they're all in these, you know, re reused mason jars and they're all and you smell them and you're old, you know. And so it just looks like everything else that mom's cooking up. Um, but with the, with last year, I had an unofficial grow club just because we were kind of meeting outside. But this year I did a full um, grow club, but then kept it going um, every uh, you know month um, with these education sessions. And so. Um, Every time I'm just educating my kids about it. And it, it, at, with me as a dietitian and a home cook, I'm not a chef. Um, I just kind of, it's just all aligned with what I'm doing anyway. Growing, growing, um, you know, plants and herbs, growing vegetables, cooking it up and just showing them it's just like the other ones. Um, but in the beginning, I was calling them Colorado tomatoes. <laughs> um, and the other thing that happened is... Um, when I'm having these clubs, I, you know, my husband takes the kids out for, for the designated amount of hours and I try to ventilate out. Um, and then I stopped doing that. I was like, you know what? I, I don't want them to actually see me consume and nor do they have, they seen me impaired. Um, but I want to understand that this is just like, I mean, nobody flinched when mom had ragers in the backyard with keggers and wine galore and, and, you know, bottles of alcohol everywhere. Um, you know, that was earlier in the day. And I, I don't, um, feel like we are just kind of trying to neutralize it. And I felt like this was a way to neutralize it. But at the end of Canna Club on Sunday night, I was cooking, I was making oils and lotions. Um, but I did pick up this at the, at a yard sale. And so he's our new mascot and he is the, he's the gnome grown. And I did get, fortunately, some donated um, 
you know, a neighbor, there's lots of people that are growing secretly and they've got mason jars stashed in basements and we need to come for them so that they can donate them to um, accessible medical marijuana patients. Um, and that's what I did. Jerry the Gnome, this is where I found it at the yard sale and I also got about three ounces of, um, of um, weed to play with, which was wonderful. Um, she saw this, we cleaned everything up just to kind of, you know, I had to do it anyway. And she saw this. And of course it has the connotations like, yeah, which, which is fun because that opens people up. Um, but I had a conversation with her that night. I was like, what did you think with the gnome? You know, do you, you know, it's, it's funny. And, you know, what do you think mom, you know, mommy's doing here tonight? Cause it was a very, it was an older crowd. And, and, and I just said, you know, this is recreational and this has its purposes. Um, I said, but tonight mom was making pain creams for people and mom was making, you know, potions, I call them. And, and uh, you know, she witnessed my two sisters were here, neighbors. And so kind of, it, it, you know, she was like, well, you know, so it's not a big deal anymore, <laughs> or, or at least in my house for my kids. But I will continue that education because, um, you know, there will be teens and preteens around. I'm, I'm not going to hide it. But I am also going to educate whoever walks by and asks. <laughs> so I love that. What a beautiful way of yeah. packaging he's, that. Yeah, his name's Jerry. Jerry. He's not yes. the Jerry Garcia. I'm not that big of well, a that's what I'm kid. saying. That's what I'm saying. That's okay too. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Legend. But that is the name of the guy who was having the yard sale. And I got this for like three bucks. Lovely. <laughs> and then that. he brought out his cannabis and handed it to me. <laughs> that, I saw something in the amazing. comments about being able to grow. I don't know if in your state you're able to grow CBD. Um, but I'd give that a go as well. Uh, just planting the seed in a soil and watching it grow. And if you can't do that, plant a different seed in the soil. It's the germination process, the taproot, all those things that are going to come out and the initial little bud that comes out and says hello. That's an excellent process um, to work with your kids with, especially like basil. That's a really easy oh, one because yeah. um, oh, yeah. it kind of talks to you and tells you when it needs to be watered and when it's dry, things like that. Um, it's uh, You mentioned something about the kids seeing you consume. It's funny, um, two things came up to mind was my son can tell terpenes almost as good as a handheld spectrometer. Um, and I am so fucking proud of that. Like there's some people that are like, oh, clutch my shungite, you know what I mean? Like, but it, it's like, I love the fact that my son can do that and he's almost as, as good as I am at it. And I'm like, heck yeah, because that means he can then educate and move on with that um and i forgot what the other one was because i've been smoking so that's that but melissa i haven't heard from you i don't know if you have the space or time to be able to yeah, speak I but i just wanted to say hi hi i'll jump in real quick I'm actually in a car so that's why it's kind of dark in here okay. um but hi i'm mel of mel streets i am uh, i own an edibles company here in jamaica so i'm tuning in Hopefully you guys can hear me. Because so I was playing in and out earlier. Three-year-old had to be had. Um, and she's a very smart three-year-old. Um, so for me, I don't, I, I don't, I definitely don't leave my out for her. But she knows what's for grown-ups and what's not for grown-ups. And one of the things that I do is we do bake together. So we bake the grown-up stuff and we bake the children's stuff. She also knows that it's medicine for mommy also. Um, knows, like I have an event called Buds and Brushes and it's a cannabis event, it's a pup and paint. And anytime she sees the weed leaf, she actually associates the weed leaf with Buds and Brushes. And she will say, she's like, so she'll say, mommy, it's Buds and Brushes. Are you making Buds and Brushes cookies or are you making stuff for growing up? So she knows. Um, I, I allow her to smell. She loves to smell. So whenever I do get my, my cannabis in house, she, as you can hear, she's in the back. She definitely loves smelling the plant. Um, but, you know, safe storage, of course, because they're kids, you know what I mean? So not because we teach them. I mean, I, 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 I still think we should still just store stuff properly because they still look yummy. Um, you know what I mean? And kids are, they're very curious. So 
we don't want them to be too curious when it comes to leaving certain things out. So I just try my best to just always just educate her. And I, you know, I look forward to the day, just like you guys, you know, your kids educating other kids, because there might be a time when she is sitting next to someone in class that is using cannabis or epilepsy or whatever it is. And I don't want her to be looking at it as a drug because it is not a drug. Um, you know, so that's my tutus. I do talk a lot. Tiffany knows that. So <laughs> thank you for the floor. And I hope that. Yeah, um, yes, this group is Thanks. <laughs> Melissa, such a pleasure to meet you. I recognize the buds and brushes and baby girl in the background from Clubhouse. And so what a pleasure to put a face to, to your voice and what fantastic story again. Thank you. I appreciate that. Tiffany and then me, I think it is. If you wanted to share, felt up to it. Um, sure. Hi, everybody. Hi, Melissa. Special shout out to Melissa. She is my fave. Good to see you. Um, you know, look, I think it's really um, always awesome to see people integrate uh, cannabis and other herbal um, items in their kitchen alongside their children. I think it I think it's great. Uh, my kids are grown now, but uh, anyone who's heard me talk longer than 10 seconds about my children knows that I, um, I, I just never really put anything uh, as taboo for them when it came to cannabis or other plant medicines that were in my, in my home. There's, you know, always been a plethora of different um, items in my kitchen that I've used to heal because my children never went to a doctor. We didn't do that. My children also have never had synthetic pharmaceuticals before. I healed everything from my kitchen. So my view is a little different. Um, before they were the age of inclusion by societal standards, they each had either CBD or THC as a part of holistic therapy um, in its raw form. And uh, by method, the method of ingestion was eating, whether that's in a smoothie or sprinkle the top um, eggs or something like that, just to incorporate that. Um, into their diets, depending on what, you know, I was treating at the time, healthy children, you know, there's not a whole lot of, uh, you're just overall wellness. So, um, you know, when I hear people talk about the ways that they um, rather, you know, just include their children in what it is that they are passionate about, it is very inspiring to me. Um, I have a 19 and a 20 year old now, and they are happy and healthy. There's no difference between children who got, you know, whatever, treated at a doctor's office for an ear infection just because I put a different type of oil in their ear or something like that. Um, and I think that I also was a homeschool mom. So the out in the garden was a part of, um, you know, learning about the science of earth. And having them track the growth of any seed was always wonderful. And you best believe that we were growing cannabis at the time. So yes, of course they saw cannabis growing. Of course they manipulated it. Of course they helped harvest, uh, you know, and at very young age. So these things are not taboo. I think when you do that, uh, you invite fear and stigma. So when they see someone else do it, it's kind of shock and awe. And they're, you're just like to uh, Melissa's point, she, she wants someone, her, her child looking at someone utilizing this therapy and going, is that okay? Of course it's okay. What people do personally for themselves is always going to be okay. So, I mean, I think that's just my two cents. Kudos to everybody who is being open and having that conversation with their children about cannabis. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that, Tiffany. You brought something up for me um, when we grow. Sometimes I do use seeds that I just find in, in my plant matter. And I know, you know, good cannabis isn't supposed to have seeds, whatever. Sometimes I find seeds in it um, and we grow it. And sometimes those seeds hurt me and we name our plants, right? And it just so happened that we name our plant after him and it turned into a him. Um, and so we ceremoniously take it and separate it from the, the female plant and then we go out and we pick it and we may put it in our salads or we put it in our smoothies together. Um, and there's a plethora of wonderful amino acids, minerals, vitamins, and all kinds of yummy things that you can get just from the leaves themselves, right? And from the intention of saying, hey, I'm going to pick you. Are you ready for me to eat you? And for him to be able to listen to the plant back and, and have that 
kind of resonant uh, exchange with the world around him is super important. But Mia, I wanted to hear you share. Hi, welcome. I think you're still on mute. Uh oh, you might have to do what I did earlier. I had to refresh and go about and out and come back in. So try it, and then yeah, and then we'll we'll get you back on the horn. Hey, Tana. I just want to say hi to all my clubhouse peeps. Thank you for all your hi friends. Hi. Hi. So lovely to see you beautiful, beautiful gals together. Welcome. Thank you for welcoming me. So glad I could join in. So we were talking about edibles and child safety. Did you have anything, how you handle that in the house? Especially, you know, doing what you do in the industry. <laughs> Just be really careful. That's all and lots of exposure. Like Tiffany was saying, I just kind of stepped into the room, but I didn't, <laughs> oh, hear, I didn't hear all of your experiences, but yeah, lots of exposure and understanding. And then just to be careful with those yummy infused chocolate bars. <laughs> 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 you know, it's, uh, it's amazing how you know, to me, in all cases, no matter what it is, how a child will climb and get and get into and and all of that. And it's it's always when you, you don't really expect it to happen, maybe. So I've had those experiences and uh, only once. <laughs> I'll be honest, I had that experience. I baked some really yummy... Um, banana bread and I don't have a problem talking about this I baked some really yummy banana bread and I left it on my countertop and it had more CBD than THC in it and I told my I gave my son a little piece because cannabinoid balance and we're okay and he took a little piece made sure he had like a cup of water before a cup of water afterwards fed him something else and I was like I'm gonna go upstairs and take a shower and I had put it away and he had asked me if he could take another piece. And I said, a very small piece. And I came down, he had eaten half of the fucking banana bread. Half of the fucking banana bread. And I was like, oh shit. Okay. Okay. What do we know? We know black pepper. We know cinnamon. We know water. We know sleep. We know, okay. And he ended up, it took about an hour and a half for it to take effect. And all of a sudden he got really hungry. And so fine, gave him the munchies, fed him. Um, I had been hydrating him the, the entire time because I knew he needed to pee it out and process it. And his little body was going to metabolize it quickly. So I needed him to pee. Um, and as soon as the munchies hit, I was like, all right, let's just get him all the, the food that he wants, the greasy stuff. Let's get it all in there so it can attract all the fat and just get out. <laughs> And, you know, he ended up having a bout of crying and we sat and we talked about, I let, you know, I comforted him during that time. And then I put him to sleep. We watched a movie cuddled and he fell asleep until the next day. And the next day he woke up and he was like, mommy, what happened? And I was just like, that's a great question. And I was like, so remember when I told you, mommy told you to take a very small piece. And I was like, this is the reason why. And I was like, because I had baked and used some of mommy's other cannabis that she used. And I wanted you to have a tiny little bit of it, but I didn't want you to have a lot of it because this is the one that I normally give you. And that's when we started to distinguish and have the conversation about the difference between CBD and THC, right? And the other molecules, the fact that there's 500 of them, the terpenes, like I saw the need to have more of a conversation, right? Um, besides the other conversations that were happening with my family. And from then on, it became, whenever I would bake something, he would go in the kitchen, he'd be like, did you put, and I'm like, no, it does not, or yes, it does, and that's why it's in the microwave, or that's why it's up there, and you shouldn't be able to have it, and, you know, do you understand? I'm like, do you want to have that experience again? He's like, oh, no, 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 that, that was good, and he was like, you know, I don't know if I'm going to let want cannabis later, and I'm like, that's fine. I was like, you may not like girls or boys right now. I was like, but you may want them later. And if you do, at least now we know 
through the terpene profiles that you're going to smell some really good cannabis and be like, mm, yeah, my mom would approve of that. Like, okay, let's go that route and let's vape instead of, you know, do something else. So, I mean, shit does happen as a can of parent, um, but, and I don't mind, you know, sharing my experience and being open That's with so that, cool. but I knew how to handle it. We did hot baths. Like there was a lot of different things that we did. And now my son um sometimes he'll tell me oh i feel like i'm dizzy i'm like the cannabis dizzy and he's like yeah and i'm like okay why don't you drink some water let's start there um because sometimes he's just dehydrated and he needs to learn how to do that um and then other times i'm like if you were to experience that again what do you do and he's like the water and i was like yes and i was like what else do you do and he's just like the sleeping and watching tv and i was like yes and the eating and i was like yes there you go son no need to freak out just take care of yourself and let it pass by. Embrace the emotions that come with it and you'll get to the other side just like mommy does if she does, you know. <laughs> and so anyways, I'll stop there. <laughs> My babe's got a hold of the chocolate bar and she was only about a half or three. Mm. So not a lot of conversations about cannabis at that point yet, right? Right. But I'll that tell you, is. it's funny, like... I, you know, I've had a wonderful, blessed experience as a mom. I've been able to be with my kids a lot and see and listen and just have that luxury of helping them with their bodies at such a young age going through different things. We too, like I, I think I've just been and heard about cannabis and other <laughs> things. And, you know, we always had plant medicine and tinctures and they'd open up their mouths and, just, ah, 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 and take them like little birds and you know, one thing that was really clear about my daughter's body and her makeup is she's one of those bodies that gets, it's really, really attracted to sugar in mm -hmm. a, a way that I think maybe some of you may understand it drives more than other things. And she truly mm -hmm. is one of those female bodies that's like over yeasty and, and that kind of thing. So at this young age, we were like, oh my God, she's the craziest sugar hound ever right <laughs> so all she knew was that that chocolate bar was like somewhere up there really high up far up there where it's 10 o'clock at night i'm gonna and get that shit chocolate. <laughs> and so he calls me at work and he's like honey <laughs> so like you said that media it's a lot of comforting and just comforting, comforting, comforting through the time. And sure enough, I mean, she was having iterations of like, Dad, you look kind of funny. <laughs> like things like that. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I, me, I saw that you got your mic back. Are you, yay, are you there? My bad. <laughs> okay, cool. And then I want to get to Desiree because I know we're ending in like five minutes. Oh, we're, we're oh I'm sorry. Time. I'm, I'm sure. just such a chatty Kathy. Um, I apologize. <laughs> I just want to know if this is every month because I'm coming. Sure. Is this every month? Is it? Wait, oh, what no, did you say? Is it every month? This little. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Need... Come back. This is going to be my go to because I'm a new mom. I just survived my cancer. Oh, so my hair is back. Thank you. I'm it's my dormant. Oh my god. Yes, I live. I was supposed to die, right? But my ovarian cancer was um in 2008. So um I'm here second time to survive that. And I never thought um my ovarian cancer would bring a miracle child. So I'm a little overwhelmed. That's been three years. <clears throat> she is very smart, just like Melissa was, you know, reiterating. I was starting to get, you know. Because I feel that, you know, that that enhancement that these kids of cannabis have. So I'm I'm connected to the Sensi Media um, lifestyle. You know, I'm part of the media in cannabis. So I get all these stories from the moms. And this is probably gonna be my home because um I'm I'm new to the, all this. You know, this is my second time to live and I feel like I have to learn how to walk again. So this is gonna help me out. All oh my these gosh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so come back every month. Hit me up. <laughs> I have Sorry, a. Ahead, I'm gonna say you should join us on Clubhouse. We talk every other day. Like, yeah, I was about to every say other that. day. <laughs> what yeah. the same name, Canna Moms? 
No, on Clubhouse, just uh, follow any of the names, literally, that you see on the screen. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, just if you download the app Clubhouse and um, literally just write down any of the names that you see on the screen and follow oh, them. There's like a little bell that you can click okay. and there's this Girl Get That Money Club. Training. I needed this. I just got out of, you know, my meetings with Sensi and we're activity. So Lisa and I. I've been communicating. Oh, you better ask Jamie Cooper. She knows all the little. She, you better ask Jamie Cooper because she knows everywhere That's my to go. Girl. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I'm very honored to be part of this little square right now because I need some guidance on um, being very careful because I'm too liberal. I'm too unorthodox. I'm from San Francisco, honey. I've seen it all. So it's kind of like, you know, from 1978, from me being orthodox into a Christian home to me being hippie that I always been, you know, modern day hippie mama. And yes, my joint is outside. I would join you, but I'm just really live today. Um, the other week I was feeling like I had COVID, but I didn't think the, you know, thank, thank you universe. But um, I'm just really, really engaged right now. And I'm in more of my present than ever. So I'm, I'm teaching Naomi, my daughter, my miracle daughter, to really know that she is and um, that's the narrative, you know, and since mom is associate publisher, she's going to find stories like this to share. So Tokativity, thank you for bringing me here. You know, shout out to everybody that is a member here. I, I'm about donating more to the community because I'm not going to be here long. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm an old soul that came back and now, so I'm going to have to do my work, you know, while I'm here. So everybody if, I, if you guys need anything Yay. from the sexy family please let me know because i'm here to share my story too once i have more time i know it came a little late but you know since he's got doing some big things so thank you for joining i'm so excited that you joined um and you joined the right people at the right time so i appreciate yeah, it women Thanks empowered in cannabis tokativity um, Clubhouse, these are all like really good groups to get involved with. Um, and Desiree, I know we have like less than a minute before we have to go, but I wanted to give you a little bit of space. I'm so sorry that you only have this little bit of time, but I'll shut up. There we go. <laughs> New to everything. Um, I hope you guys can hear me. My phone keeps going in and out. But um, so this is my first talk to and so I'm really excited. But I am in Clubhouse and the Canamoth and um, just really trying to make a career move into cannabis, but um, I actually bought the Weed Moms book. I read that with my ten-year-old daughter, so that is like how we just she's getting knowledge about that, and I'm very open with like my um, weed activity with her. Um, so like she does smell when I do come home with some new flower or anything to show her what it is everything was going on in that um i'm learning myself now because massachusetts is legal that it's a i did anything anymore you know growing up so long massachusetts too desiree oh you are i'm i'm in cambridge yeah oh, where nice. are you i'm out in the middle of nowhere in Athol, so but oh you know, yeah, we can connect. but yeah that's pretty much me in a nutshell I'm so sorry that your time got cut off, but I'm so glad that you found us. And please, I literally, we host an endocannabinoid balance club every weekday, seven awesome. to eight, to just work our minds first. Um, but come join us. And please, you're definitely welcome back to Tokativity. I've been coming here for two years on and off, and I absolutely adore it here. Um, but Literally, the event is done. Hey, Erica. Hey. Welcome. Um, the event is done. We've got to go back to the live stage to finish up. But thank you so much, everyone, for joining. I so appreciate you. Many blessings to every single one of your souls. It's um, so nice to see you and not to share you. Instagram, at Nydia, <laughs> N-Y-D-I-A-C-W-C. And I'll post some of the places where you can find all of these. All right. Have a wonderful night. Many blessings. You too. Bye. Peace be with you.